Why have you abandoned Real Hebrew? Greetings. Uh, I was uh, looking at Vocab Malone's video from last Tuesday titled Hebrew Israelite Language Debunked, which has over 500 comments on it now. And uh, one particular comment stood out. Uh, let me scroll to it now because uh, uh, I want to take a look at this particular comment. Hold on one second here. So this person, who's apparently a ranked member of the ISUPK, of the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge, uh, he told me that he has a rank of officer of 50, and he left this comment on Vocab's video, and just to be clear, it's a video critical of Lashwan Kodash, and he left a comment in Hebrew, though in the Phoenician script, uh, presumably to add to the sense, to the, the air of Lashawan Kwadashness, or for lack of a better term. And so uh, I wanted to discuss this comment because there's some interesting features in it. And uh, honestly, there's certain parts of it which are indicative of a trend I'm seeing amongst proponents of Lashawan Kwadash. Uh, so what I'm going to mention here is probably going to come up again in a future video which discusses uh, a different person. But let's focus on this comment here. So the comment begins with these three words, Ha'adam halaban hu, the white man is, and now you ask, is what? And then the next two words were left me completely perplexed. Ha'sakan uh, shehitneyen? I don't know what sakan is, right? So that's not a Hebrew word I'm familiar with. And uh, I'm guessing that that next word, that second word is, I mean, obviously the shin is a prefix, but then what is, what is after that? Is I, I was initially left wondering if that was a, a verb in the Hitba'el, maybe a, a Hitneyin or something like that. But there's no verb Hitneyin that I'm familiar with. So I was left perplexed with this. It seems like gibberish, this part, Hasakan Shehitneyin or whatever it is. And then the final two words are Medaber uh, Lao, which uh, means like uh, speaking on it, speaks on it. And then it dawned on me what he was trying to say. Uh, the ISUPK and other One West groups have a saying that they often repeat, which is that, quote, the white man is the devil which the Bible speaks of, or, or that the Bible speaks of. And then it dawned on me pretty much what he probably did. He probably used some sort of translation app, some translation app for that which translates from English to Hebrew to modern Israeli Hebrew, and uh, put that famous One West saying in, the white man is the devil that the Bible speaks of, put that into the app, got back a Hebrew sentence, and then retyped that sentence, tried to retype that sentence in the Phoenician script to give the impression that he's conveying it in Lashawan Kodash. So consider, for example, that word Sakan. Uh, <laughs> He clearly intended the word Satan uh, with a tet, which is the word for Satan or devil. But he wound up putting a kof instead of a tet, and so you get sakan. Now, sak in modern Israeli Hebrew is, uh, is like a sack. It's a loan word from English. Sakan, I don't know. I guess that's uh, uh, <laughs> maybe with the possessive, with the female, feminine uh, plural uh, third person uh, possessive. I have no idea what sakan means. It doesn't mean anything. But uh, so clear, this is admittedly an easy mistake to make because, at least in the Phoenician script, the tet does sort of look like the kof, the kof but still. Uh, so he meant satan, he put sakan. Then that brings us to the next word, which left me perplexed. Initially, it looked like it was a verb in the hitpael, but uh, then it dawned on me that it's actually a noun. Uh, I, I realized, you know, he was trying to say that the Bible uh, refers to the white man as the devil. And so how would his translation application, whichever app he used, how would that render the words the Bible? Well, obviously, it would render Bible as Tanakh. Now, at this point, someone might want to split hairs and say that the Tanakh is not the Bible. It's not the whole Bible. It's just the Old Testament, at least from certain perspectives, not from a Catholic or Orthodox perspective. But nonetheless, uh, I, I realize that I understand that. But keep in mind that the application he, was, he used was probably developed in the modern nation state, which is called uh, Israel. It's probably developed by citizens of the modern nation state called Israel, Israelis. Um, and so therefore, they would translate Bible as Tanakh. Uh, and so that word uh, actually has two prefixes there. It's Sheha Tanakh. Now, but at this point, someone would notice, but that's not what it says there in the Phoenician script. There's two Yods there. And I only realized the mistake that he made because I have seen it before. I've seen other 
proponents of Lashawan Kodash make this mistake, and it's going to come up in a future video. I recently wrote a tweet about the phenomenon, uh, which read as follows, quote, I'm seeing a trend of uh, proponents of Lashawan Kodash mistaking the Gershayim in the Hebrew acronym Tanakh for two yods. In a vacuum, it's an understandable mistake, but the mistake takes on a certain ironic humor when one makes it while exuding arrogance and spewing insults, end quote. See, the Hebrew word Tanakh, which itself does not fall in the Tanakh. You can't find the word Tanakh in the, in the Tanakh itself, but it's, it's actually a rabbinic acronym. And uh, it's, the three letters represent three different words. So the, the, the Tao is for uh, Torah, the, you know, the Pentateuch. Uh, the uh, Nun is for Nebiim, which is the, the prophets. And then the Kaf is for Ketubim, the uh, other writings, essentially, right? And so Tanakh is an acronym, and what looks like a quotation mark in between the second and third letters is a mark that's developed uh, later on after the Bible, and it's called Gershayim. It's a, essentially a diacritical mark, and uh, Gershayim signifies usually that a acronym is present. Sometimes it can also signify that a foreign word is being used, uh, but whatever the case, it, the Gershayim signify that a f- Tanakh, uh, excuse me, a acronym is being used, and sometimes people who aren't familiar with that diacritical mark mistake it for two yods. And that's what happened here. The person who left the comment, who had this English phrase translated and then transcribed it in the Phoenician script and then posted it as a comment to Vocab's video, he clearly didn't know what he was looking at. When he saw the Gershayim, he thought he saw a double yod, and therefore that's what appeared in his transcription, and that's what appears in his post. And then on top of that, I don't think this gentleman was familiar with the uh, Sofit letters with the final letters within the Ashuri script with the standard Hebrew script because he mistook the Kaf Sofit for apparently a Nun Sofit. Uh, he, somehow he mistook it for a Nun and therefore instead of a Kaf at the end of the word Tanakh uh, was he put a Nun instead. So instead of Tanakh you get this strange word that I guess he would pronounce Thanya uh, Yayana or something like that. I have no idea. Then he received a reply from someone else uh, who said that this only shows that he's lacking. I'm guessing they meant that uh, he's lacks knowledge of Hebrew. Uh, and uh, his response, he responded with yet another Hebrew attempt at a Hebrew sentence in the Phoenician script. Initially, I was unsure what he wrote. He, once again, I found it somewhat perplexing. I mean, look at that very long word there. I mean, I, I can recognize lama, but then that second word is very long. Uh, but then I realized uh, what he was trying to convey or what the text meant he probably put what do you mean into a translation application that same one that he used for the previous sentence uh, and it gave back it gave him back lama uh, at mitkawenet however the pronoun at and the 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 verb mitkawenet uh, are both feminine and uh, yet he's responding to someone named joseph and i think he knew that the person he was responding to was male and i think he had no idea that the sentence that was given to him by whatever application he used was treating the person being addressed as female. What would have worked better is lama ata mitkawen, where you have a masculine pronoun and uh, the verb, it's actually a participle of the verb, uh, hitkawen, uh, which means to refer. Uh, in uh, Anyway, the participle also in the masculine. Uh, the Literally, this uh, lama is to what? You, zata, and then uh, the verb lehitkawen means to refer. So literally, to what are you referring? And that's, you know, he probably put in something like, what do you mean? Also notice that his statement has a double wa, and uh, that's, I don't think that's because he hit the wa twice. I think it's because the application gave him the word with the double wa, uh, which is, it comes up in uh, modern Israeli Hebrew. You see double wa's in the biblical text, but I don't think it ever comes up in the middle of a verb, maybe at the end of a verb, but never in the middle of a verb. That's something that's more rabbinic, and certainly in modern Israeli Hebrew, to convey that uh, the, the, the wa is being used as a, as a consonant. Intrigued, I uh, went ahead and took a look at his YouTube page, and there's nothing on there except a, uh, a playlist. But the playlist has a title, which is yet again another sentence, another statement in the Phoenician script. And uh, this one was particularly bizarre. I mean, when I was looking at this, I couldn't make sense of it. It, it seems like it says Yehudis, Imites, Hes, and then Shachoris. I mean, I. I, 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 I the first three words 
it seemed to me that uh, maybe he was transcribing an English word. Like, I actually wondered if maybe the application he used, he actually auto-dictated it rather than typed out the English. And, you know, because it seemed like they were English words almost, like Yehudis, imites, he's, you know, like a, a, the, the Yehudi is imitating his something. But then it dawned on me what was going on here. Uh, that Samech at the end of each word was actually supposed to be a mem. He probably ran a sentence. No, I know he did. He ran a sentence. I'm confident that I, that I can, you know, uh, sort of reverse engineer what he did here. Whatever application he used, he put in an English phrase. And that English phrase was, the re real Jews are black. And he got back a series of words which had a final mem at the end, a mem sofit. And um, a mem sofit, the final mem, looks a lot like a samech. And therefore, when he transcribed that Hebrew phrase into the Phoenician script, he wound up putting a samech in each place where a, a mem sofit appeared. So what he was actually trying to write was Yehudim amitiyim hem shachorim, the real Jews are black. Now, before I close, I realize that some people might get the impression that I'm trying to pick on this gentleman, and to be honest, I'm not. Uh, first, let me say that the kind of mistakes that he made, uh, confusing, for example, confusing a tet in the Phoenician script for a kof in the Phoenician script, or confusing gershayim for the double yod for two yods, or confusing a kaf sofit for a nun sofit, or confusing a uh, mem sofit for a samech, these are easy mistakes for people who are just starting to learn Hebrew. They're very forgivable mistakes and, you know, in a vacuum, I don't think they should be pointed out or, or poked at or anything like that. Uh, but in this case, he wasn't admitting that he's someone who's just learning Hebrew, just starting to learn. Instead, he was feigning knowledge of the language while also posting insults and insulting people and stuff like that. And so for that reason, it seemed worthwhile to point out the fact that, I mean, with all due respect, he was bluffing to a certain degree. And not only that, to also note the irony here, he's trying to promote Lashawan Kwadash as ancient Hebrew, you know, to be contrasted with modern, modern Hebrew. Yet, what was he doing? He was running English sentences through a translation app, which rendered the sentences in modern Hebrew, and then he was trying to put a Lashawan Kodash spin on them, rendering the sentences in the Phoenician script, but without actually knowing what those sentences said. I mean, the mistakes that he made would not have been made if he actually knew Hebrew, even ancient biblical Hebrew. He should have you know, he, if he actually knew the language, he wouldn't have made the mistakes that he made. And that's the central point here. I mean, again, I'm not trying to pick on this person. I just wanted to use this as an example to show what, the, to it, it, honestly, to give an example of the sort of trends in Lashawan Kodash that we see out there. There are a lot of people who are feigning knowledge of the language, yet who are very much, with all due respect to them, are very much novices. And that's not to say I'm any sort of, of expert. I myself am just a student. But nonetheless, there's people People who have an absolute beginner's level knowledge of Hebrew, just like the barely even have the basics, and yet they're going around and insulting others and trying to confidently feign being quite familiar with quote unquote Lashawan Kodash, the alleged ancient Hebrew, which they try to convey through the Phoenician script, but more often than not, they're just throwing modern Israeli Hebrew in, out there and garbing it in the Phoenician script. By the way, it's also worth noting that this means that it's apparently possible to become, to reach the rank of officer of 50 in the ISUPK and not know any Hebrew. Uh, as I said, I'll have another video that's going to cover some similar trends uh, coming out later, uh, maybe in the, in the next week or so. But uh, for now, I look forward to the comments of others, and uh, God bless.